Trossard leveled the tie just before half-time, courtesy of what was an incredible assist from Arsenal's captain Martin Erdegaard, who we just heard from. And when you consider what Leandro Trossard has done so far this season, it's remarkable what he's done in the Champions League. He scored in his first three matches at home in the Champions League for Arsenal. The last time that happened was Bokayo Saka, the time for that Alexis Sanchez, who we've just seen. And we can actually see his goal contributions this season, 11 already in all competitions this season. He's become incredibly important for Michael Arteta and Arsenal since joining from Brighton in the January of 2023. He's averaging a goal involvement every 122 minutes, which puts him third on that list behind Saka and just behind Gabriel Jesus as well. Crucially, he's just ahead of Gabriel Martin. So we wait to see what happens when the Brazilian returns from injury because Michael Arteta now has a real conundrum in that left wing position. But it's a good headache to have for Arsenal because they now have real quality and strength and depth in all positions. OK, it's not often when we kind of see a great goal like he scored and it's such a crucial goal, yet we're drooling over the assist. It shows how good that was from Odegaard, doesn't it? Yeah, it was really special. I think, you know, the best sort of language creators of the 21st century, the likes of Iniesta, Ozil, Zidane, they'd all be proud of that assist. It was a moment of exceptional spatial awareness, timing. The fact he's also falling over as he delivers the pass just made it even more aesthetically pleasing. And it was Trostard's only shot on the night tucks it away really nicely. But Odegaard, I think, was, aside from David Raya, probably Arsenal's best player. Wendell, who I already mentioned, shackled Bukayo Saka really effectively on the right wing. He struggled to really exert much influence. But it was Martin Odegaard that was constantly probing, picking up the right positions and nearly grabbed a winning goal that would send them through in normal time as well with that shot that Gabriel Jesus nearly got on the end of as well. And it's satisfying for Odegaard because he did start the season slower than he finished last season, came in for a little bit of criticism. So to have exerted his influence in such a massive game for Arsenal felt like a big moment for him too. It was one of those moments where you can tell instantly from the sound of the crowd that it was something special. You know, even before Trostad finished it, there was an acknowledgement of what an amazing piece of skill it was, and to have the composure and quality to then produce that pass as well, it was really special. And it was impressive as well because Porto had actually done a good job on him. You know, they really had nullified him, they'd limited his influence, he'd only had 14 touches in that first half, he only made six successful passes, but when the moment arrived, when he needed to show that bit of quality, he produced and that is what the big players do in those moments. And it was a lovely piece of skill to watch, wasn't it? And a huge contribution in the context of the game. And just how important was it for Arsenal? Well, they've not won anything yet, but it feels like Arsenal have crossed a significant psychological barrier by reaching the quarter-final stage. That was because they'd lost at the last 16 stage in each of their past seven appearances in the Champions League. That includes some fairly humiliating nights really at the Emirates, including their last appearance at this stage in 2017. They've dumped out 102 on aggregate by Bayern Munich, and the player featured in five of these as a manager. Last night, he finally ended his European curse at home. He previously managed five Europa League ties at the Emirates Stadium without winning any of them. So it's taken 14 years and three days for Arsenal are finally back in the last stage of the Champions League. That's amazing, isn't it? Because there's some Arsenal fans in their mid-twenties who were still in primary school the last time that happened. There's a thing. Arsenal chances of winning both. Let's get greedy now of winning both the Premier League and the Champions League. Incredibly difficult to do both, but you've got to be in with a shout and they're in with a shout in both competitions. They are probably the form team in the Premier League right now. I think the Champions League will be particularly difficult because all the favourites thus far have won. And there are teams that have a superior record against Arsenal in latter stages. Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, they've all beaten Arsenal in big games in recent years and have more experience in latter stages of competition. We talk about their last 16 record, but Arsenal haven't made the semi-finals of the Champions League since 2 00809 when Ronaldo scored a brace. So it feels like a long, long time ago that Arsenal have been at this stage of the competition. I think it'll be easier right now to focus on the Premier League, but as long as they're in Europe, they'll want to try and go for both. I think they'd take one of the two, wouldn't they? I don't think even the most optimistic Arsenal fan could possibly imagine a double this season. Which would you, if you're an Arsenal fan? Well, I think the Premier League has to be the number one, doesn't it? 
I mean, for Arsenal, obviously the Champions League has added significance given they've never won it, but it's a really tough decision. I mean, the Premier League is kind of the bread and butter of a team like Arsenal, and that's the one that I think they'll be thinking of most closely. That's the one that best measures your quality as a team, doesn't it, over the course of 38 games. But I mean, I think what they've lacked in Champions League terms is experience. Even the team they put out last night, a lot of those players were new to the Champions League this season, making their first sort of appearances in the competition, and Man City showed the importance of having that experience. It took seven seasons for Pep Guardiola to get this trophy, even though you could easily argue that Man City have been the best team in Europe for longer than a year. So I think that's something they need to build up over time, and last night will help. It was almost a crash course in what the Champions League can throw at you, a wily streetwise opponent. Remember, Porter play in the Champions League every year. They know exactly what it takes in these games. They know how to disrupt opposition. They know how to make life very, very difficult, and Arsenal came through that. They passed a test, a big test of character, and they can dream. They're in the last eight. They're a very good team. They should be bolstered by this experience they've had against Porto. But yeah, of the two, I mean, I'd say that the Premier League has to be the priority, but who knows? 19 days off for Arsenal now before that big one against Manchester City. The players, or the majority of those players, don't get that time off because they'll be joining up with their international squads. But that sort of break in the rhythm of what Arsenal are doing as a squad, as a collective, as a group, is that a help or a hindrance? Well, without meaning to sit on the fence, I think you can go both ways with these things. I think if they'd lost last night on penalties, that would have been a really huge stop in their momentum. There'd be a lot of criticism. They were expected to beat FC Porto, despite the fact, as Nick points out, they'd had great performances against Inter Milan and Liverpool in recent years, FC Porto, so they were not easy opponents whatsoever. But Arsenal, the last time they had a break in the season, they went to Dubai. That was after their difficult festive period, and since then they've won 8 out of 8. This is slightly different, because there is obviously an international break here, and a lot of their players will be involved in international duty. But what I think is quite interesting is that Martin Odegaard's playing for Norway in two friendlies. Norway aren't involved in the Euros. Perhaps he'll be not playing both 90 minutes in those. Gabriel and Saliba aren't necessarily first choice for France and Brazil, respectively, just yet. So as long as they come through injury-free, I think they can go full throttle for that game against Man City on the 31st. It's interesting, isn't it? Before last night, I probably would have said it would be a hindrance, that it would disrupt their rhythm at a time when they really need to continue that rhythm. But then, being at the ground last night, watching the players, I mean, they really did look dead on their feet at the end of extra time. And I think now, having come through these two games against Brentford and Porto and emerged with victories in both, I think it's a good time for a break. We saw the impact of that mid-season break in Dubai. I think it's 9 wins out of 10 since then. So Arsenal have shown the benefits of having that period of rest in the middle of the season, and I'll be hoping this one can have a similar effect, because obviously there is a massive game looming afterwards.